Okay, now we will talk about antiderivatives. And if you're taking notes on the printed page, you should have a page in front of you that looks something like this. It says, suppose we have a function f that is the derivative of another function which we call g. We can say, and you can write this in your page here, we can say f is the derivative of g. f is the derivative of g, or we could say an equivalent statement, we could say g is the antiderivative of f. And so if you understand what a derivative is, this statement should give you an understanding of what an antiderivative is. So if we have some function, some function f, that is the derivative of function g, so let's, let's draw this. Let's say there's some function here which we call g and maybe it's a cubic and it will have a derivative that is a parabola. If f is the derivative of g, then g is the antiderivative of f. So anti-differentiation is the reverse process of differentiation. And a synonym for antiderivative is indefinite integral. Indefinite integral. And this term integral is actually much more common than the term antiderivative. You actually rarely hear or rarely read the term antiderivative. Although I will use that term because it does capture the meaning. It's the reverse of a derivative. But the term integral we will also use extensively and that is by far the more common of the names. Now follow this example or this set of examples here. We're told to sketch the following graphs. First, there's x squared, so that's pretty easy. It goes through 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, and a mirror image of that over here on this side. So that's a graph of x squared. Function g here is x squared plus 2, so that's the same graph, just shifted up to. So it looks about like that. Function h is x squared plus 3. So it's my x squared graph shifted up 3. It will look about like that. Function k is x squared minus 3. So it's my original x squared graph shifted down 3. So it looks something like this. OK. So just some rough sketches there of those functions. Okay, and they're all alike, just vertical shift of an x squared function there. Now we're told find the following derivatives. So for each of these functions, f, g, h, and k, we're going to find the derivative. Now remember when we take the derivative of a constant, it's just zero. So the derivative of f primed here is just 2x. And I'll scroll down. The derivative the derivative of g, g primed, is also 2x. The derivative of h, h primed, will be 2x. And the derivative of k, which we call k primed, will be 2x. So all of those functions have as their derivative 2x. And that makes sense, because at any x value, any of those parabolas have the same slope. They're just shifted up or down but they have the exact same curve characteristics for any given x value. So all of those functions have 2x as, the, as their derivative. So here's the question. What then is the antiderivative of 2x? And we would say this. We would say the antiderivative of 2x is x squared plus c. So it could be x squared plus 0, just the x squared curve, or x squared plus 2, or x squared plus 3 or x squared minus 3, that c could be negative, or any number, x squared plus 2.14 or anything like that, but any number c could be there. It doesn't matter what constant you have right there, the derivative of this will be 2x. And that, that uh, constant c is called the constant of integration. And whenever we anti-differentiate a function, 
or whenever we integrate a function, we're finding the function that has this as its derivative. So we're integrating this function 2x. We're saying what function has this 2x as its derivative? And it's this. It's x squared. But it could be x squared plus anything. Any parabola x squared shifted up or down any amount will have as its derivative 2x. So you can see why the constant of integration has to appear. That function x squared plus c is called a general equation for the antiderivative. And the above expressions that we had for f, g, h, and k, the x squared, x squared plus 2, x squared plus 3, x squared minus 3, all of those are called particular equations for the antiderivative. And what we will, what we will see in some examples coming up is that in many cases, we're able to anti-differentiate a function, which gives us the general equation for the antiderivative. And then we can use some given information or some known piece of data to find the value of c, and that will give us a particular equation that applies to that particular problem.